What's up guys, it's Drag. Today we're gonna to talk about something super unique, super compact, super cool, and surprisingly powerful. All right guys, so it's not actually uh, Jinx here. Jinx is just in this video to convince you to like it, but she does fit all the criteria of being super cute and surprisingly powerful. She's in the middle of that uh, puppy teething stage where she'll pretty much bite just about anything, which means this lipo should not be here. Uh, ignore the lipo, Jinx. Um, we'll show you what the video is actually about now, but I wanted you guys to meet her. This is my little sister's new puppy, Jinx, and she's, uh, she's incredibly sweet. We're watching her today, so she has to be in the studio because she has a mean case of separation anxiety. But wanted you guys to meet Jinx. Let me know in the comments down below. What do you think of miniature schnauzers? All right, so this is the compact cutie that we're actually talking about. This is the NG2, also known as the Goblin, coming straight out of Germany. This is one super slick sidearm. So it's using the micro wheel, not the nano wheel, but the micro wheel platform, which has been proven to be pretty robust. Uh, the Hurricane Stage 2 kits get heckin' loads of power. Uh, looks like it has two DC motors in it. I can't actually read what kinds of motors they are through these vents, but it's got a very organic, almost Cobra Hood-esque top to it. Now there's no magazine release because this is a friction fit. It slides in, there's clearly some sort of detent. It is holding itself in there very, very well. Uh, and then you kind of yank it out to get it back. Now, uh, trigger action, ultra smooth. Rev switch is still this funky, uh, it's very German in that it's very functional, uh, but perhaps not aesthetic. Now, the rest of it is aesthetically incredible. Like, it's got good lines, good layers, good design choices, great design DNA to it. Even a top rail up here and then a pseudo top rail on the Cobra hood. But the thing that this really has going for it is it's ultra compact, ultra easy to to access sort of internal. So semi-auto pusher, crazy simple rev switch, thin handle for sure, but overall plenty of purchase, good grip there. Uh, nothing to complain about. I wish the rev switch was a little bit different, but I didn't design this. This has been designed from the ground up by my 3D base over in Germany. Same person who sent my NG1, same color schema as the NG1, and actually just phenomenal design. Like, really impressed by this. The iteration is the coolest thing about 3D printed blasters. It's faster than any of these injection molded companies can do it, and this is clearly something very special. So I've gone ahead and grabbed my Out of Darts 950 Graphene, uh, 2S, which is what the recommended uh, S rating is on this bad boy, and I can fit that in there pretty nicely. That just snaps down, and once it's down, it's down. It's hard to remove. I imagine eventually over a few thousand. That's interesting. It's not revving. So I don't really know why it is not revving. It should be ready to go out of the package. Anything is possible. Anything could have happened on the trip over from Germany. Come to think of it, that's sort of funny. Jinx and this blaster are both of very German origins. How funky is that, Jinx? Uh, anyway, unlike Jinx, we're going to have to take this downstairs and dissect it uh, because uh, it's, not, it's not functional right now. And I really want to know how it ticks and how it's going to perform. So let's uh, take all of that gorgeous design DNA and start breaking it down into genomes. All right, guys, so I think I determined the error. Happens to the best of us, not that big a deal. I think this may be a knockoff XT60, and it's just not doing the ticket. So we bypassed it by taking the hot lead from the XT60, plugging it directly into our LiPo, then taking a wire on our cold and plugging it into the cold on one of the Goblin's motors. Now the Goblin's motors are labeled and we'll talk about those in a minute, but. You can see that gives us full function, seems to be great. Uh, and you can kind of see how this splays out. We've got all sorts of machine hexes going through it. The muzzle comes off in one piece like this. Uh, just very beautifully designed. Should be very easy to get it back together. Accessing this switch was as simple as popping this panel off. I like this a lot. Uh, it reminds me a great deal of like Timmy Wynn's level of expertise when it comes to designing for printing 3D printed blasters. So the one thing that we're going to do here is we're going to try replacing this XT60 connector with one of our genuine ones from Foam Blast and see where we go from there. Of no so these aren't micro wheels, they aren't even mini wheels. They are custom to uh, 3D base 
uh, printed flywheels. Very interesting there. Have a super uh, unique size and profile to them. They're flatter, but appear to have the knurling built into them. And they're doing the tickets, so uh, no complaints here. And then inside here, you can see the motors that they're using are FK180PH 4225Z. I know nothing about those motors, but the fact that he's using full-size 180s is serious, and the craziest of crazies about this is that means you could make this whole system even a little bit more compact by switching to a 130 or 132 size can. I'd love to see full-sized uh, fangs in this bad boy. So let's uh, go ahead and disconnect this. Our experiment is thoroughly over, and we're going to reassemble it now uh, for functionality. All right, guys, just a quick proof of concept. <laughs> All we had to do was remove this Chinesium, and we seem to be good to go. So let's go ahead and add on some foam blast goodness. The differences are barely perceptible. In fact, I can't actually tell the difference. So we'll throw on some fresh heat shrink. We'll get this bad boy on. We'll restitch this guy together, and we should be in good shape. Let's go. All right, so that was a quick fix. Super easy, barely an inconvenience, and really gave us a good look at the inside of this guy. It's simple, it's sweet, it's to the point. Those printed flywheels are very unique, very cool, and we finally got it. <laughs> ripped and ready to go, but we need talons for it. And what better way to shoehorn a Project Scabbard uh, advertisement into this video than to grab a couple of fully loaded talons out of this thing and uh, just mention that we've taken this to, I think, four or five wars now, one in Texas, SCNC. Uh, we did APOC. Uh, we did a war up in Canada in it. Just a lot of really great uh, product testing for Project Scabbard, our <laughs> collaboration with SOE. Uh, it will not be sold after the Kickstarter. The Kickstarter has a few days left on it, so check out that link in the description box below if you want the absolute top shelf way to carry not just talons, but katanas, katanas, anything, uh, any sort of half-length magazine profile. We did test it with the DZP half-lengths, and it handles those very nicely as well. Uh, it's the best tactical gear that has ever graced our hobby. It's super cool. It's available for a limited time on Kickstarter right now. So wanted to shoehorn that in there, wanted to mention just how incredibly this had been running for me, and it also was a great way to hang the talons up on the pegboard. So let's throw one in. Try not to freak out the puppy. <laughs> feel like one more dart and we would have obliterated. In fact, he's gone from being a happy squid. We shot him a little too much. He is now in full on upset mode. He's mad squid. We'll see what happens. If he's happy squid later on, you guys know that uh, we did something good. So that's undoubtedly impressive. That is really, really cool. We've got a full fresh magazine full of workers. Uh, let's go ahead, let's take it outside. Let's put some over the chronograph. Let's give you our final thoughts. This thing is awesome. All right, guys, so we're out here. We're taking a look at the Goblin. I want to put it over the chronograph. I want to get some numbers for you. I'm hoping that it's close to 130 because I'd really like it to be my new uh, sort of end war blaster. Anything around there up to 150 makes it a great SCNC blaster. I would absolutely love to uh, replace my Wii with something that'll charge faster with the smaller LiPo and something as compact as this would be ultra mega level crazy sweet. Uh, I also just really love the design of it. I think it's a very elegantly designed blaster and it's so small that I could fit it in a pocket. Uh, it would be an easy throw in, include, loaner, anything for SCNC Wars. So I'm hoping that that's sort of the performance. I know on the website it says specifically this is designed to be a sidearm. So we'll see what kind of performance we get. We're definitely getting some good noise out of it. Jinx, Jinx, what is up? When you rev it, she's kind of like, I don't know, man. This moss is less interesting now. All right, so hopefully it doesn't freak her out too bad. All right, so that appears to be exactly that. It's a little over 130, which unfortunately would break end war legality, but we could fix that by using possibly different darts, possibly a less charged lipo. Like, there are definitely ways to to wick 5% off of a blaster like this, but that's phenomenal for SCNC performance. I think this guy's going to be coming to a lot of wars with us. I really, really like the overall ergo of it. Let's go ahead, let's put a few down range. Uh, I do just want to mention, I'm not holding 
the XT60 thing against this guy. Um, happens to the best of us. I've gotten hardware kits from Captain Slug that are missing uh, different pieces. I've had issues with my FDLs before, like all homebrewed, homemade blasters like this that don't come from full-on production companies with quality control departments are bound to have the occasional hiccup. This was a quick and easy fix, and it gave us an excuse to look inside and really find out what makes it tick. So that was pretty sweet. So shout out to our Katanica pants holding an extra magazine. It's actually doing the same thing my Wii does where it's decapitating a couple of darts, but uh, the darts that flew straight and then the dart heads of the other ones are doing really solid work. I think that this is a great contender and I've saved the best part for last. This guy is crazy inexpensive. So he's currently sitting at I think 67 euro, which because of the exchange rates right now is only about 74, 75 United States dollars. So even if you're paying to ship it over from Germany, it's less than a hundred bucks to get one of these in your hands in North America. And I think that's crazy sweet. So I'm gonna put a link down in the description box below. It's not an affiliate link, uh, but I think that everybody should have access to this dude's website. I think he'll do a variety of different colors, although I do not know what filament he uses. And I'm pretty confident that it is closed source as of right now. So uh, the only way to get one is through my 3D base, but it's crazy sweet. I think the, the blaster has amazing ergonomics and clearly has performance to spare. I'm getting eaten by, uh, by mosquitoes. I will see you guys next time. Much love, Nerf on Drake, out. Hey guys, if you can hear this over the outro music, I'm going to be streaming tonight at 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Come hang out, play some magic with me. Twitch.tv backslash vampire drag.